Hello, and welcome to PLCCable.com. Today, we are going to be reviewing our Analog Micrologix 1100 PLC Trainer. We will be also reviewing the sample program that is included with the trainer and that we have preloaded to the trainer to test the inputs and outputs before we ship them out. You can find all of our trainers by clicking on the left side of the screen under PLC Trainer Kits and then selecting the brand that you would like to see. So let's get started. First we're going to cover the, the actual program that's in it and we'll, we'll start running it so we can view it and see how it operates. You, on the trainer you have four lights which are our outputs. You have four inputs, two push buttons, one red that's a normally closed, one green that's a normally open, and then two toggle switches. And then there's also an on and off switch that will kill power to the trainer. You have a potentiometer that gives you a 0 to 10 volt input to the PLC, and then we have a meter that's a 0 to 10 volt output from the PLC. So we're going to go ahead and run the program. This is not part of the lessons that we're including. The lessons are included with the, with the Allen Bradley trainers, but they go in a lot more detail than what we're going to be covering here. We just want to show you a few of the features that are with the trainer and what we load into the trainer to get you started and so you can see what you can learn from the trainer. So as we start to run it, You notice the speed of the flashing lights changes as we turn the pot up and down. So we'll go ahead and we'll review this now in the logic. So now we're going to start reviewing the logic. This is a video, so don't pay attention to here um, because we're actually online with the PLC. In the first rung, um, toggle switch one and toggle switch two both need to be in the up position enabled. The green push button cannot be pushed, and the red push button, or the green push button cannot be pushed, and the red push push button cannot be pushed. So this is a normally closed, so that's why it's drawn normally open in here. That means it's going to be normally closed unless it's pushed. And that's pushing the red push button. The green one is normally closed in the logic, and it's a normally open push button, so that's why it's true or closed in the logic. <clears throat> so when we flip up both toggle switches, and they're both enabled. Neither push button is pushed. Then we have a, our timer, which is T40. And basically what this is doing is, it's go, actually it's so fast you can't see it, but when T40 hits 50, when the accumulative hits 50, this done bit is true. And what that does is it opens up the logic, excuse me, <clears throat> it opens up the logic and the timer restarts itself. So this is basically just running in a loop. So as long as nothing's doing, then it's just going to be going um, over and over counting to 50. So after that counts to 50, we step down here on rung one, and this is an equals, equals two. So our T40, which is this one, and when the accumulative value equals 20, this becomes true. And what that does, every time it hits 20, we go up on our counter. And you can barely see it every occasionally here. It's when it goes enabled or um, true, it actually indexes up one. So our cumulative value down here is 13, 14, 15. And so whenever this hits 20, it counts up one. 
and the preset is at 64 so when this hits 64 is when the counter is gonna go true and somewhere in the rest of the logic we'll uh, we'll see what that does so this is a move and it's taking the cumulative value of counter zero five c5 counter zero the cumulative value which is 24 and it's moving it to our destination which is output zero zero and that's why you see here that it's moving it to our output word when we look at our output word here we can see that this here is going to be the same as this so it's taking this counter accumulative value moving it to the word of our output now our output word if we change this from decimal we go back to binary this is the same thing that our lights are doing so basically we're moving a, a decimal value into our binary which is a 16-bit binary for that output word so this is our word which is here and it's taking that accumulative value and moving it to that word so we can change it back to decimal and we'll see that it's equals this we change it to binary and we see that this is the same thing that it's doing with the lights so here's your output zero zero output zero one output zero two output zero three so when we play this it's doing the same thing that our word is doing here and we'll get into the speed in a second So that covers that rung and this rung. Now we're taking the accumulative value, the ACC of the timer or of the counter, excuse me, which once this hits 32, it's going to reset the counter. So this is a kind of moot point that because it's never even going to hit that value. Once it hits 32, it resets to zero because of this counter reset okay so on our next two rungs we've covered three now we're gonna go to four and the ne the next two work hand in hand and there's not really much uh, I didn't put any comments on here and um, we should have we should always put comments so that way you know what's going on you don't have to really look at it you can just read it and figure out what's going on but here's what we're doing with it. the next two are a scale and a multiply so we're taking our input word and let's open this one up to our in our analog input word which is our potentiometer and this is the decimal value of it here so 400 and I'll turn it down it goes down to 6 the 0 is all the way down then it goes up to 1023 and what we're doing is we're scaling that and then we're gonna move it to our n78 which is our output so we're taking this analog value and we're scaling it here to 32,000 offset of zero and we're moving it to here so if we go here let's go to n78 which is 19 so that's our our scaled input from our proximity switch now we're going to multiply it so we take n78 which is a value of 602, multiply it by 10, 
and we move our destination is our output word. So our output word is one out one zero, which is going to be our output card here, and it's going to be one on here, which is going to be our meter is what we have it wired to. So as we turn the pot, we're going to see that and and that's why it's a straight 10 multiplication and the scaling is the way that it is because what we're doing is when the pots all the way at 10 the meter reads 10 when the pots at 50 the meter reads 50 or 50 percent and when it's at zero then the pot should go back down to zero so you should be able to see that scale back and forth there And so they just go one and one, and it's basically just doing a, a word for a word. And that's what these two rungs are doing here. So we're taking our potentiometer and we're moving that value basically to our meter, so that way we can test the meter and see the value on it. And now for the last part of the of the logic. Here we're taking our analog input. We're doing another scale with it. So our rate of 950 offset of zero and its destination is 710. So if we look here. Of a value of one. If we turn it up. And now, in the next rung below it, we're using a knot. We're taking the N710, the value of it, and we're moving it to N711. And that's inverting the number. So we come up with a negative number. We can, let's see if we can see something like this. We're taking this number, this word, and we're moving it to N711, which is the complete opposite of this word. So we're taking this and we're changing it to a negative number. Now we're using that negative number and we're adding 100, a value of 100 to it. So we come out with 55. And we're going to be moving that 55 to our timer preset. And here all we're doing is we want to make sure that we stay within our range we don't want to go too low or too high so this is our timer preset which is at 55 if we turn it down let's move the video back here if we turn it down and I'll try and match somewhat with the video. So it goes up. The timer preset goes down of a maximum of 25. And that's when you get the fast count. So it's changing that count from, from resetting here to resetting every 25. When you turn your pot down, it increases that value. And that's why we do the not to 96 so if it's resetting every 96 so 9.6 seconds now because this is at a hundreds 9.6 seconds a lot slower than if we turned it up here at 2.5 seconds every time it's resetting
like I said, what we want to do with this is we want to have some control over. We don't want it to go too fast or too slow. And then this is a overflow trap because PLCs don't really like negative numbers. So by putting this, it stops the PLC from going into a fault because of the negative number. And that's it. Like I said, it's a real short, this isn't a lesson, this is just so you get an idea of what you're going to be looking at, how you're going to be programming, and what you're going to be able to examine. Um, when you get out in the field, it's the same thing. This is a motor. This can be a solenoid switch, or, and these can be a push button from an operator pushing or a signal from a machine, a proximity switch saying that something's in position. All PLCs do the same, and they're going to be doing the exact same thing as this. So what you're going to be doing is just getting comfortable, getting comfortable with the logic, how the logic operates, how the PLC operates. And if you can get comfortable with everything, then you can go out in the real world and take on any of them that are in, out there. A lot of the programs are a lot more complicated, and some are pretty simple. I hope this helps. Thank you, and have a great day.